allowed to swear? Yeah. I really don't want to be in here. Uh, what episode are we? Crap. <laughs> a book. A no skirt. Just because I don't like being on camera doesn't mean I have to drink to be on camera like some people. I can probably start this camera over here then. Alright, go. and welcome to episode 29 of Knights of the Round Table. Today we are discussing the book Red Shirts by John Scalzi, written in 2012, but I am going to open up with first impressions. Who wants to go first for first impressions? Okay, I'll okay. I thought this book was kind of funny, actually, or very funny, actually, in very uh, strange ways. You know, you, you read the title Red Shirts, and if you're a Star Trek person, you probably figure out what the sort of the premise of the book is and uh, so forth, but then it takes a little bit of a twist <laughs> about halfway through, and it's kind of a, a good book. Um, and I enjoyed it, I'd say. I was able to read it probably in less than a day, mm -hmm. so, which is unusual for me. It usually takes me a week to read a book. Downright hilarious. Um, when I got it, I listened to it as an audiobook, and I listened to it again just before coming here. Um, it's a, I think, eight-hour audiobook. So if you're a double speeder, it's quite quick. Um, the story just starts off. You, you, you're just wondering why red shirts, and then when it clicks. And as an audiobook, the great thing is it's read by Will Wheaton. So uh, <laughs> is it? It is. Oh, that's awesome. And Will Wheaton does a lot of John Scalzi's work. So the first time I heard that, I'm like, hey, it's Will Wheaton, which kind of detracted from the story. For the, whatever audiobook that one was, and then I got over it, and then now it's just like Lou Eaton does John Scalzi stuff, and it's awesome. So it, if you like audiobooks or want to try one, this is an absolutely great fast listen, and it's I cannot recommend this book enough. It is just hilarious. Yeah, um, it is very very funny. Um, although I sort of guessed what was happening from the prologue. <laughs> so um, yes, yeah, it's it's not a, everybody talks about the or people i talked to about, talked about the giant twist in the book and i was like yeah but i was kind of expecting that from the start <laughs> um that said it is an extremely funny book very very witty and uh if you're interested in something that's quick and light and will keep you amused i can't recommend this book enough it's it was a pleasure to read <laughs> okay so thoughts I can cross funny ass book off my list. <laughs> yeah, it literally said funny ass book. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> it says funny arse book. Yes. Because ah. it's not a donkey. So. <laughs> <laughs> Live and learn, folks. <laughs> okay. Not awkward at all. <laughs> <laughs> But that's, I mean, the, the problem is, this sums up the book. It is funny. Yeah. It is, it is fast, it is light, it is funny. The story itself, you know, from perspectives of people who have watched Star Trek, it's like, how do these people not know they're getting them? You know, <laughs> anyone who's alive today knows that someone wearing a red shirt is going to be a fatality. Yeah. Um, Phew, I'm safe. <laughs> you're a main character. I'm the main character. <laughs> This show's all about you. So You're, how horribly are you going to die? I don't know. I was to say, in the prologue, um, and, and it's the way that the deaths are dealt with as well, they're just so throwaway, and that makes it morbidly hilarious. Like uh, when Davis fell over, and um, or he's running away, he's like, no, I want to live, I want to live, but then he tripped and... Dies anyways. Yeah, a landworm ate his face off and he died anyway. <laughs> that was literally the line, and I was literally I was sitting in bed going... <laughs> Because it was just so random and silly and just really bad, Have but you good at the same original time. Star Trek? Um, not in recent memory. <laughs> so it wasn't a no, it just not really I think, I think that's a deferred no. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember watching it is what she means. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's true. Okay, so if you watch the original Star Trek that was shot in the 60s sometime, before I was born, um, the deaths are literally like that. Some guy in a red shirt comes it. down and dies randomly for, you know, it's like, <laughs> no, he has a phaser. He could have he totally shot that guy, but gets killed anyway. 
So, yes, he was stuck in the narrative, which is one of the reoccurring things of yeah. people live their lives through this book, and then suddenly they get gripped by the narrative, which means they're part of an episode. Is that spoiler alert? Yeah, it is spoiler alert. Spoiler That's alert. okay. You should have read it anyway. Yeah, yeah. you it's should have actually paused this years. five minutes ago and just... <laughs> Gone and read the book. Gone and read the book. It'd be quicker than watching us talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I do like... Um, Spoiler alert again, it was basically Stranger Than Fiction, but for science fiction? I guess, has anybody seen Stranger Than Fiction? No. Oh, it's a great movie. Anyway, this is basically what this book is, but, you know, for an alternate uh, science fiction show from the ones that we know. And uh, Scalzi hits on that in the Coders. He literally says it right out out loud in the Coders, and that, I thought, was equally as funny as any of the stuff that happened in the book. <laughs> it really did tickle my funny bone. I was like, hee <laughs> I kind of like the, uh, where he hits upon the, you know, when the guy, uh, I think it was Jensen, had done some research and he said, yes, the only time, the only other one with the high mortality rate that this ship has was, was, the, was the Enterprise from a TV show called Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Jenkins. Which, if you hadn't figured it out by now... Yeah, <laughs> yeah really. Yes, and then they also hit upon... I think they make, they, he makes mention of Star Wars. Yeah. And Dune, actually. Yeah, that's what, that was the whole landworm thing. Cause yes. The episode in which poor Davis died, um, death by landworm, was... It was written by one of his underlings who had just finished, was it reading or watching Dune and had been a massive fan of it, so that's where the landworms came from. <laughs> These little nods to like science fiction pop culture that are all throughout the book are really, really awesome. I really like that. A lot of his books are like this, actually. Yeah? Um, while I was on vacation, I read Electric Sheep, which... I was like, okay, that's an interesting title. I, it wasn't what I expected, but then you, as you're reading it, it's, it's very pop culture, very current, very, and it's basically about a cult that is completely, you know, it's a religion, it's completely made up, and they know it, but they're trying to bring their prophecies to fruition. Oh, that's a really neat premise. And it's ridiculous. So, hmm. anyway. Scalzi is one of my favorite authors now. Um, uh, <laughs> I've read enough of his books now that I'm like, okay, he's right up there with uh, Robert Sawyer in levels of how much I will just go buy his stuff now. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, I think this is the only Scalzi book I've read. I certainly want to pick up more if it's sort of more of the same. And But though I do read his blog, and his blog is equally as amusing and yeah, irreverent. Yeah, yeah, he's quite amusing on Twitter, too. Is he? Except for his propensity to type in all caps. Uh, <laughs> so he does a lot of shouting. Not all of it. Sometimes he's shouting, and I understand why, but sometimes it's just a bit much to look at. So. Oh, okay. No, actually, yeah, this book, I think I do want to go read some more of. Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I can't. I recommend his stuff very highly. Yeah. So. About the coders, too. I love that he uh, mentioned what perspective they're from. Like, the first coder is first person. The second coda is second person. And the third coda is third person. It's almost like a manual for any person who isn't quite sure what third, second, and first person means in writing. So he lays it out right there. This is what third person writing is. <laughs> and I thought that was chuckle worthy. Just from a writing perspective, that made me smile. Chuckle worthy. It's a word. Chuckle worthy. Worthy? Right? Chuckle worthy. Chuckle worthy. Yeah, it sounded funny in the other way. Even blinking, which is what it's supposed to do. Well, that's see, as a dramatic part, I'll bring my drink back. <laughs> oh, God. oh yeah, we had this whole thing about you not having the drink on the table for editing reasons. And then she complains about my drinking on the table, and then I take the drink away. And I made a joke about dehydrating or dying of dehydration at the end of the episode. And then Bill said it's because you're a red shirt. Exactly. You're wearing exactly. a red shirt. Are we just going to talk about the entire what happened? <laughs> Uh, I really said it didn't record! <laughs> okay? <laughs>
this group. You didn't push the button. This is why I never in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> because when I'm behind the camera, I can see that it's recording. Okay, I kind of think that what I let off with the last time we spoke about this and it didn't record was um, that there was a fantastic dialogue between the characters. Like the bat between them felt very, very real. And then we had a heated discussion about it to which none of us remember. No, it was just general agreement. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's. As this episode has been. There, there's, it's difficult to say anything bad about the book, other yeah. than the possibility that it's too short. Um, no, see, because if it was any longer, I would have been fed up. Yes, I would. I would. I would enjoy a revisitation to this. What, like a sequel? Maybe. You find out what Hanson was talking about at the end of the book. Yes, but that's the thing: is it leaves a little bit of room, and. Uh, I enjoy the idea of people living through some hack writers yeah. <laughs> intruding on their life yeah. briefly. Yeah, every so often. And then the, the idea that you can tell when they're gripped by the narrative because their personality switches. Yeah, exactly. They say things they don't say. Ex yeah. Uh, ordinarily. It would be a good excuse to be random, though. I'm going to use it. Yeah. I didn't need an excuse before, but I'm still going to use it. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was gripped by the narrative. <laughs> Plant is suspect. Gripped by the narrative. <laughs> I punched somebody randomly. Oh, sorry! Narrative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. This everybody scooches back a few feet. <laughs> yeah. Well, and now I don't know what to talk about because we've all talked about. How about we just pause it here and I'm going to run the the audio that we managed to capture. No, 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 no. We, but it was good stuff! I know it was good stuff. Okay, so we talked about... This is a point where we pause the editing. We talked <laughs> about... Um, I talked about the banter. We talked about... Yeah, we bring up the banter. Um, we, we're going to talk about banter. Yes. That's a good song. Um, narrative. narrative. <laughs> <laughs> It was a cool video, <laughs> and they're like one hit wonders. Um, Talk about the last chapter a little bit on. How um, it I also, oh yes, also um, uh, outside of the banter, Scalzi has some really hilarious lines, like uh, when Dahl and uh, Grover are on a mission together, and Grover's one who gets killed, and Dahl <laughs> looks back, and the line is quote at Grover's still surprised body. And that makes me deal. I will every time. He clearly didn't see it coming. So. Nope. And that his body is still surprised. He was. He didn't see it coming because he thought he was safe. Yes. Because he really exactly. figured that doll was going to bite. Yes. Him. Exactly. Um, and also, uh, uh, some of the funnier moments, even when they're supposed to be quite sad and touching, when spoiler alert, Finn dies, he whispers, "This is ridiculous." Yes. It was awful that Finn was dying, and it was really sad, but I read that line and I'm giggling all over again because it was just ridiculous and funny and yeah, it was just, I really, really appreciate it. To have your last words said, <laughs> no. this is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, almost last words, they weren't really. I know, close enough. Close enough. Yeah. They're, they're, they will be the last words in history because history always gets the last words wrong when it comes to sure. historical figures dying dramatically. Yeah. Yeah. Then of course, then there's the first quote coda where the writer of the script manuscripts <laughs> is having a conversation with all his dead. <laughs> um, yeah, in his dream. In his dream. She was right, you know, you're a bad writer. <laughs> <laughs> well, imagine for a moment that you're a writer and then you find out that all of the characters you've been killing off are actually real, real people. And are, are dying. And are dying these horribly ridiculous deaths that you are just using as a throwaway before the commercial plot point. Um, <laughs> and they are really ridiculous and throwaway. Was it in this section that I talked about um, how Davis died in the prologue and how much it made me laugh hysterically? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, just, they're just so simple and throwaway and dumb and that's what makes it funny and even because they're so simple and throwaway and, and really stupid uh, the language that is used to describe them is equally as throwaway like he tripped and a worm ate his face off and he died anyway yes 
Yeah. Moving on. <laughs> yep, that was the first time I started laughing. Yeah. <laughs> and the worst part about it, you knew it was coming. <laughs> Just the way he was, he, he built up that whole section. You knew it was going to happen. Yeah. yeah. And we talked about how there's a lot of nods in this story to other science fiction. Yes. And just the ridiculous things that happen in science, you know, in general in science fiction. In general, fiction. yeah. Um, I think we also talked about, uh, there were some actually really touching moments, uh, despite all the humor. Like when uh, Dal meets Nick, who played the character Finn, uh, in our, our world in 2012, and that was very touching and quite sad. And then the third coda, um, all of Samantha's story made me quite sad. And I was like, oh my god, this is gorgeous and sad and really pretty. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with me? Why am I crying? Yeah. <laughs> it was good. The... Yeah, that left. So the thought just decided to... It did. It happened. Yeah, the narrative. The narrative. The narrative struck me blind. Or knocked the thought out of your head? Yeah. Well, I don't know, did it strike you blind? Can yes, you see? If you could no. put thoughts in your head, I guess I could take them out. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm going to edit this out just to, if I had already mentioned it, but it's not a very confusing story. I mean, the twist was given away at the prologue and confirmed very early on in the book, so if you didn't see it coming, yeah. I, I can't help you. <laughs> you have other problems. <laughs> but it still was a really fantastic read, despite, you know, knowing what's going on yeah. pretty much all the way through the book. It's still really fun. John Scalzi is uh, probably one of my favorite authors now, up there with Robert Sawyer or um, Wilson Charles Smith, who well, wrote uh, The Chronoliths and stuff like that. These are all really good reads. Um, nothing is quite as, I mean, this is, Scalzi has funny nailed. I read yeah. The Electric Sheep, which is a book from in the past <laughs> few years that is just, it, it, the premise of the book is, uh, a made-up religion tries to bring their own prophecies to fruition, and it's just ridiculously funny. And yet, you're you're listen. I'm listening to these, but it's a literally a page turn. I'm like coming up with excuses to keep walking so I can finish listening to it. So, um, yeah, I definitely gonna have to go buy some more of his books. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah I would definitely re read more of Scalzi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. Okay, if you were to give this a rating out of five stars. Apparently, I've already rated it four on Goodreads, so that's what we're going to go with. Because that was a statement that wasn't there. <laughs> Anyways, yes, I uh, I also gave it a four stars, so and I rated it on Goodreads, and I really enjoyed the book. It was uh, light, and it was probably about what it, I needed probably to uh, get myself back into reading. Mm -hmm. Just to really annoy Tom, three and a half stars. <laughs> Going home now. That means that means it was a really good book, um, but it wasn't. Uh, I mean, yeah, I want to read more. I would probably add this to my shelf, but it's not a book that I would pick up and reread as consistently as I would say Gardens of the Moon or Lord of the Rings or something like that. So it was a really good book. I'm not sorry I read it, and I want to read more of his stuff because it was very funny um, and it was light. It was good, um, and I really enjoyed it. So three and a half stars. So go read the book, is what we're trying to tell you. Okay, that's everything. Yay! Uh, except we have to pick out the next one. Who wants to pick it? Me. Snap! <laughs> hmm. I'm just deciding if I want to read this book or not. No, <laughs> Dealing with Dragons by... Uh, Patricia... This is, I don't know whose writing this is. That's my writing. And it's it looks atrocious, Andrew. I know, don't I? It's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> like, she must, I mean, it's work well. It's not I worse than I think it's Patricia Marcus. C. Reed. I will, uh, I will research that and put that up in the... Research that. Yeah, I think it's Patricia C. Reed. Spelled with a W. R-E-D. R-E-D-E? W-R-E-E-D. Oh, okay. Or something. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Maybe it's CW read. Yeah, really. I might have been dyslexic, uh, having a dyslexic episode. Actually, let's, protect, let's, let's read something else. Let's read. No, um, no, no. The Chronolith no. by Robert Charles Wilson. It's a no. Good book. No? No. <laughs> Calculating God by Robert Sawyer. No. You don't want to read that book? I do, but that, this is the one that was picked. I didn't pick that. Yes, you did. Wait, you changed the paper. I did not change the paper. By magic. You can't see what's written on it? Uh -huh. You can't read what's written on it because my writing is Okay, bye! <laughs>